Hey there, welcome back. One of my recent projects, I made a bandsaw box, made several of them actually, and one of the problems with the bandsaw boxes is sometimes the drawers are so irregular shaped that you can't put felt, you know, that sticky back felt or sticky back cork. Uh, you, it's hard to get that in there. And one of the better solutions for me anyway is to flock them, the drawers. It's uh, you paint the inside of it and then you uh, sprinkle it with some suede looking uh, flakes. And but, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you how to flock some small drawers, or you could do it on anything. But we're going to flock some drawers to a bandsaw box. Stay tuned. So the flocking kit comes as a kit. It comes with the it's called suede tex. I bought this at Rockler, but you can probably get it at other places as well. But it comes with your base coat. It comes in many different colors. And we're going to use black today, but I've used red and I've used green. And then it also comes with a, a little sprayer. It's nothing more than a corrugated tube with some, like a salt and pepper shaker. And it opens up. It opens up. And inside is where you put your flocking material and you put that in here and then uh, this acts as a as you do it like a little pump action it'll put the flocking on the inside and we'll get to that but one of the first things that you have to do is we're gonna make sure that we only paint the inside I don't want to paint the areas on this box this particular drawers these drawers that we're going to deal with today they've already been finished and so you have to cover the areas with mask it off basically with some blue masking tape or frog tape or whatever makes you happy but I'm going to use this blue painters tape and just mask off the area where I do not want any f black paint or flocking to get. This uh, black paint also washes up with mineral spirits. We're only going to do the one, but so make sure your edges are sealed down. I keep all this in a little kit. I keep it in a little box, and you'll see why in a minute. In here, I keep you know the the base coat, the the sprayer, for lack of a better word, the material, the little brush. You'll see why in a minute. And, and my applicator brushes <clears throat> so that way whenever I'm ready to do a box it's always there okay so our next step we've got we've got our we've got our box mask off our next step is to actually apply the base coat so you would want to stir this up. I used it earlier today, so it's in pretty good shape as far as being stirred is concerned. So, the next step is to be generous with it. You don't, I mean, you don't want it to pool, but you want to be generous with it. Coat the inside of your box or your drawer. And I guess you have the option of whether you want to do, you know, the entire box, or you can see how this this particular drawer is oddly shaped. Some of your drawers, you may just they just may be square. Now maybe all you want to do is the bottom, and that's fine. But I elect to do the entire drawer because of the irregular shape, plus. 
another deal on these bandsaw boxes. Sometimes these shapes are really, really difficult to sand on the inside. And using this flocking, you really don't have to sand on the inside. Because this flocking covers up. Oh well, I say you don't have to sand. You, I do get some of the sand marks and saw marks out. But this flocking covers a multitude of sins. Not only does it make the final drawer and box look expensive and nice and elegant, but it also covers some of the woodworking woes like saw marks and sanding marks or saw burns or whatever your issue maybe yes and I don't care how good of a woodworker you are or you think you are you're gonna find you'll eventually battle saw marks and burn marks if anybody tells you they don't I would question that Okay, you can see we've got our box coated thoroughly, thoroughly on the inside. This is why I use this little plastic container. A little plastic container or uh, uh, you know, a box, whatever you want to use. But all you do is Kind of pump this little thing back and forth. You can see the suede covering the box. And it says be a real liberal with it. Okay, so that's all there is to that. Now here's the only bad part of this process. You have to let this set like this. It says 12 to 15 hours. So at this point, and it's kind of cool today. Here, uh, my thermometer says it's 65 inside, 60 outside, and it's raining. So the drying effect's not going to be quick. So I'll let it set overnight, and then tomorrow... Um, I'll show you the rest of the process, but what will eventually will happen is that we will take this and we'll shake all the loose out and then you take a little brush and lightly and tenderly brush off the excess after it's uh, really cured and uh, then you have the box. So we'll let it dry overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and complete it. Before we sign off for the evening, wait for this stuff to dry, We'll point out another aspect or positive about this flocking material is that when you store it in a container like this, it's real easy as long as you keep it, you know, dry and but it's it's real easy to brush it down and then to put it back into the container. And reuse it. This is the after spray from us doing our box, and and it's just real easy to put it back into the container because this this suede flocking material is not inexpensive. So it's uh good to be frugal with it. I mean, you want to be liberal with it when you apply it, but you don't want to throw it away either. So just thought I would add that and we'll finish up tomorrow. Thank you. Our flocking is dried overnight and now we can untape it and get rid of the excess and I'll show you how to go about doing that. Okay we can see a lot of the residual suede flocking in there and what we do that's why I, I store things in this plastic container we 
just tap the bottom and that's why I have this light brush is that you gently, ever so gently brush it along the insides so that we can get as much of the residual as we can it seems like I never get it all out once I continue to use the box for a little while it continues to break loose a little bit but one of those mysteries of life I guess and we untape it and then we can see that we've got a real nice looking box and we repeat that on these remaining two drawers and in just a moment I'll show you what the finished bandsaw box looks like well this is not the box that we've been working on I have to apologize that one actually sold before I had a chance to come back and shoot the final video and I'm not surprised it was made of zebra wood and walnut and it was just gorgeous so but here is another one that I used personally that was flocked as well this one's made of mesquite and maple but you can see and I keep my French cuff links and tie tacks in but you can see it's flocked and it serves as great protection to your nice pieces of uh, of, of jewelry or whatever it is that you that you want to use it's a great alternative to that sticky back liner that can be really difficult to put in these uh, irregular shaped bandsaw boxes. So. so that's how you flock a small drawer. Uh, that's how I flock them for bandsaw boxes. It adds a real elegant touch to your uh, craft item. We hope you got a skill builder out of it. We hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment and subscribe to our channel. I've been calling it LLS. Like, leave us a comment and subscribe. Now next week's video, we're going to see how I built the new segmenting sled. I talked about it in my, in my video last week, I think, when we had coffee together about that was one of the upcoming projects, and some people had asked me about it. Well, next week we will look at building that segmenting sled. And you can find us on Instagram at LL underscore Woodworks. You can find us on our website at www.ll-woodworks.net and on Facebook at LL Woodworks. Thanks for tuning in, and until next week, work safe.